15th, 1965, this flag becomes officially the national flag of Canada. This is of particular interest to vexillologists. One of these men is the leading vexillologist in the Western Hemisphere. What is your name, please? My name is Whitney Smith. My name is Whitney Smith. My name is Whitney Smith. Only one of these men is the real Whitney Smith. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth, and here sitting in for Bud Collier is our host, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Sitting in once again for Bud Collier, and good evening to you, panel. Good, good evening. evening. Oh, boy, you vexillologist, huh? All right, we are brought to you tonight by, here it is, Direxin. And Direxin dissolves under the tongue for relief of head colds, misery, sinus congestion, Direxin. Now, panel, let's go. Let's open our envelopes. Follow along, please, as I read. I, Whitney Smith, am a vexillologist, an expert on flags. I am the editor of the Flag Bulletin, the only magazine in the world devoted to flags, banners, and pennants, and the proper methods of displaying them. I also design flags. Here is the flag I designed for Mozambique for use when it becomes an independent nation. Flags have been used for thousands of years. The Roman legions carried their flags called vexilla with them into battle. And flags vary from the uniquely shaped national emblem of Nepal through the 2,600-year-old rising sun of Japan to the flag of Liberia, which is based on our own stars and stripes. Incidentally, there is absolutely no support for the legend that that dear old lady Betsy Ross made the first American flag. Signed, Whitney Smith. <laughs> That sounded so harsh about poor old Betsy that I wanted to modify it slightly. Here are three gentlemen. They all claim to be Whitney Smith, authority on flags. Incidentally, the American flag hanging behind these gentlemen is owned by Mr. Whitney Smith. It dates from the administration of George Washington. Now then, let's start this questioning with our lovely Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, Bob. Um, number one, what is a panache? A panache? I don't know. Number two? Uh, it has something to do with a fanfare of trumpets, I believe. Thank you. And uh, number three, um, are you the only vexillologist in the world? No, there's another one here in New York. But I, he and I share the honors. Number two, do you design flags? Uh, yes, I've designed a number of them. Number one, who designed the maple leaf that we saw on the monitor? The maple leaf was designed by a team of five uh, in Canada. Five people? That's right. Number two, is it generally five people who design flags? No, committees can be of any size. Number one, number three, what is the difference between a I'm pennant sorry. and a... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom Poston. Uh, number two, I think I heard number three say that there were, he and another man were the only vexillologists in the world. Would you go along with that? Um, no, uh, I and uh, several other people throughout the world are, uh, hold that honor. But would more you than say, two. Would you stick by your answer number three? Yes, I would. As a matter of fact, I invented the name vexillologist. Uh, ho, ha, hi. Uh, n <laughs> number one, do you know who Barbara Kulik is? No. Number two, do you know? No. Number three, do you know Barbara Kulik? I don't. She's very interested in flags and so forth, so I wondered <laughs> if they might know. Why, well, do you know Barbara? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody right. in the audience know Barbara? We'll find out about Barbara later. Let's go to Peggy Kaz. You know, Vexilla sounds like Vexilla the Monster in a movie. You know, Vexilla. Oh. Uh, number two, the Canadian flag finally narrowed down to a choice of two. This one obviously won. What was the other flag like? Uh, I believe it was a... Uh, similar flag but it had blue uh stripes on it and and three leaves thank you number three do you agree with that yes thank you number one you said that betsy ross had nothing to do with it but in philadelphia i've been in a house with a big government plaque on it that said she sewed it up right there in that house well histor historians now believe that while betsy ross did in fact sew many flags that she did not sew the first one 
Well, I must say that the city of Philadelphia is putting something over on the general public. <laughs> <laughs> Think about poor Betsy. All right, Orson Bean. Uh... That's in addition to the water. Uh, <laughs> number one, the flag of which tiny African nation bears a picture of the hated Gaboon Viper on it? <laughs> I don't recall any any with a, a, a viper on it. Oh, well, there are several would've... other animals. And there are there are snakes in several of the uh, insignias right. and emblems. Number three, Nepal. How is this curious uh, thing shaped that they have? Well, it's in the shape of two mountains. Nepal, having so many famous mountains, they designed their flag after this uh, topographic. Number two, don't tread on me. Which uh... we won't, Orson. <laughs> but right now we'll ask you to vote, if you will, without consultation panel. Mark your ballots and select vexologists. Number one, not vex vexillologist. Number two, or number three. That's a tough word, vexillologist. All right, have we all marked? Yeah. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one because uh, I think that e even if number three did invent the word, that still there must be other experts on flags more than just a couple. All right, Peg. Well, I voted for number three, because when he talked about Nepal, he said it was like the mountains and everything, and that's where Sherpa Tenzing comes from, so I voted for number three. Sherpa Tenzing. Friend, friend of Barbara Kulik. That's right. <laughs> Orson, Orson, for whom did you vote? Sherpa Tenzing. <laughs> His name. All right, he's a famous man <laughs> in that country. Number two uh, is my uh, choice. <laughs> he, it's him. <laughs> All right. Kitty? I voted for number three because number one didn't know what a panache was, and a panache is a plume on a, on a medieval knight's helmet, and number two said it was a fanfare of trumpets, and I didn't ask number three, so I believe it's number three. Well, there you go. There's the reasoning, and there are the votes. Now then, let's find out which of these three gentlemen is, I wish he'd never made up this word if it is he, is the real vexillologist or flag authority. Will the real Whitney Smith please Stand up. Hot. Oh! <laughs> wow! That's marvelous, Mr. 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 Smith. I uh, uh, I would never have suspected. Tell me, uh, how many vex how many flag authorities are there? Well, we have 225 subscribers to our flag bulletin, and I would say maybe 25 would really rate as as experts. I see. Subject. I see. And what about poor Betsy? You mean really? No, the, she made flags but for the not government, the first. not the first. Oh, it's a Paul pity. Revere didn't do that right either. No. <laughs> he didn't. He got caught. The guy named William Dodge <laughs> right. did it. Number one, let's be we excellent, excellent fibber. Let's find out about you, sir. My name is Lincoln Worden, and I'm a stockbroker for Laird Bissell and Meads in New York. Very good. Very good. Number three, you got yourself two votes. You're an excellent fibber. Tell us who you are, sir. I'm Paul Parker, Jr. I'm an art director for the Phillips Petroleum Company. <laughs> oh, that's marvelous. Well, gentlemen, as you see, as you see, there have been three incorrect votes, which means a total of $750 for you. Congratulations. On your way out, we have a gift box of fine products from the makers of Direction for each of you. Thank you so much. Good night. Meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Bill Anderson. My name is Bill Anderson. My name is Bill Anderson. Panel, would you please listen while I read? I, Bill Anderson, was a college student six years ago. Today, I am generally considered to be the top composer of country music in the nation. Country or hillbilly music accounts for almost half of all the record sales in these United States. One of my songs sold over three million copies. Country music's equivalent of the Oscar is the BMI Award. I have won this award 23 times to date. In the six years since I left college, I have written some 350 published songs. Signed, Bill Anderson. Composer of country music. Let's start this 
cross-examination with a gentleman who is currently starring and brilliantly in Mary Mary at Mineola, Long Island, or some beans. Bless you, buddy. Number one, which label does Elmo Farnsworth record for? I don't know, sir. Number three, Elmo Farnsworth? Number two. I don't know. All right, number two, uh, what kind of a voice does Tex Ritter have? I mean, in the range. High, low, in between? Tex number Ritter number two. Range. Number two, a uh, very low. Number one, uh, 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 is most country and western music uh, recorded in New York or Hollywood or where? No, sir, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, number three, who wrote Old Dog Trey? And why didn't he answer? I don't know. <laughs> number two, Old Dog Trey? I don't know. Number one. I'm not sure. I think Stephen Foster. Good grief. <laughs> There you go, thank you, Thoris and Kitty. Um, number three, I don't wish to be personal, but why are you wearing this costume? <laughs> well, it's all I had. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. There must be some other reason, number one. Why are you wearing this costume? I'm afraid that's all I had, too. <laughs> well, number two, uh, what is your formula for this fantastic success, or don't you have one? I don't have one. Number three, do you record in Nashville? Yes, ma'am. Uh, number one, where did you go to music school? I never went to music school. You never went to music school? No, ma'am. Did you? No, oh, dear me. Uh, number three... Sorry, Kitty. Tom. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Number three, uh, what is, who makes the Fender bass? The Fender Guitar Company. Uh, thank you, number three. Number two, who, who owns the Fender Guitar Company? Oh, I don't know. Do you know number one? No, sir. You know number three? No, I don't. Uh, number one, uh, do, you, do you know uh, Scruggs' partner? Flatten Scruggs, yes, sir. Uh, number two, what is the uh, name of their uh, aggregation? Uh, I don't understand you. What, with what group do they play and perform? Oh, they, the Flat and Scruggs Band. Uh, any more, number three? They call their band the Foggy Mountain Boys. Thank you. Do you know a, a great guitarist, number three, in Houston by the name of... Uh... Uh, <laughs> That's one of the best questions I ever heard. Tom was thinking of... No, Tom was thinking of that great guitarist, Barbara Kulik. Now then, thank you. Thank you, Pat. Number one, if they give that, the, the Oscars the BMI award, you've only been writing them for six years. How come you've gotten it 23 times? They must give it out every three days. <laughs> I, mean, I write a lot of songs. And I mean, I mean, how often do they give the prize? Once a year. Well, you've gotten it 23 times in six years. Somebody's goofed. I, I don't mean that they're not worth it, but I mean... If you've only been writing for six years, how come 23 times you've gotten it? Well, it, it depends on the number of times that you, uh, your song comes up staying in the top 15. Oh, I see. Number, number three, who's Minnie Pearl? She's a comedian on the Grand Ole Opry. Thank you. Number three, are those snowflakes on your costume? Yes, ma'am, I think so. Uh, number two, who's Joan Baez? She is a folk singer. Thank you. Well, there you go, panel. Once again, it's time to vote. Without consultation, please uh, mark your ballots. Selecting, if you will, number one, number two, or number three. And again, I, uh, I'm curious to see how you vote. Everybody said? Okay, Tom, how did you vote this time? I voted for number one, Bob. And I think uh, CBS just bought Defender Base Company. I'm surprised that they weren't aware of that. Is that right? Peggy. Well, I goofed. I voted for number three, but now I just remembered he had to look down at his own suit to see if they were snowflakes. <laughs> if he just stood would be in the closet, he'd know they were snowflakes. <laughs> um, I was all set to vote for number three, and there's something about the way he said that Minnie Pearl is a comedian in the Grand Ole Opry, even though she is, that shifted me over to number one. It's a bad reason, but the best I could come up with. I kitty. I voted for number three. I thought number three gave the best answers, and I still don't understand why they're wearing those costumes. Well, you may find out in a minute. All the votes are in there. Minds are made up. Do you at home agree with them? Well, we'll find out now. Let's, let's see which of these three gentlemen is the real composer of country music. Will the real Bill Anderson please stand up? No. Oh. Uh, Those 
those, uh, those of you who are fans of one of radio's greatest and oldest shows, Grand Old Opry, are familiar with this fellow, Bill Anderson, because not only is he a composer, but a darn good performer. And uh, as a matter of fact, he's been kind enough at these ridiculous rates to sing for us tonight one of his own compositions. This is called Poor Folks. Here's Bill. <laughs> Daddy was a farmer, but all he ever raised was us. He dug a 40-foot well, hit 36 gallons of dust. The Salvation Army gave us clothes to wear. A man from the county come to cut our hair. We live next door to a millionaire. But we want nothing but poor folks. We was poor folks to live in a rich folks' world. Sure was a hungry bunch. If the wolf had ever come to our front door, he'd have had to throw a picnic lunch. But we had something at our house money can't buy. Kept us warm in the winter, cool when the sun was high. For whenever we didn't have food enough, and the howling winds would get pretty rough, we patched the cracks. Set the table with love. Cause that's what you do when you're poor folks. And we want nothing but poor folks. Mom and daddy was poor folks. Brother and sister was poor folks. And even Robert Q was poor folks. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. That's very good, Bill. Thank you. As a matter of fact, thanks to Bud Collier. You know, I'm not such poor folks after this <laughs> couple of weeks on the show. But very good, Bill. We do thank you. All right, let's find out now which is what, what these other fellows are. Huh? Number one, would you tell us who you really are, sir? Yes, my name is Scott Jackson, and I'm manager of Cokesbury Bookstore in New York City. <laughs> And number two, I wonder if you'd tell us who you really are, sir. My name is Tracy Stallard. I'm a pitcher with the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. There have been, as you see, gentlemen, two incorrect votes, which means a total of $500. And on your way out, there's a gift of fine products from the folks at Direxon for each of you. It's been a ball. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you, Bill. Let's take time out for a brief film, then back in just a minute. Challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Rich. My name is Joan Rich. My name is Joan Rich. All right, panel, would you follow along, please, as I read? I, Joan Rich, and my husband have just written a book about New York City. It's not a guide, but rather a handbook for recent arrivals on how to act like a native. Among our more practical hints are how to park your car in the city even though it's clearly impossible, how to throw a successful cocktail party in Manhattan, how to keep your dignity during the subway rush hour, how to give directions to a cab driver, how to find an apartment you can almost afford, and how to break a lease. We call our book, How to Be a New Yorker. Signed, Joan Rich. Three attractive ladies all claim to be Joan Rich, co-author of How to Be a New Yorker. Peggy, we'll start with you. Thank you. Number two, how do you keep your dignity on the subway during the rush hour? I carry a hat pin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, man, I make a lot of friends. Tell me, uh, number three, what's alternate parking? That's when you move your car from one side of the street to the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, number one... <laughs> Number one, is that your successful method of finding a place to park? Uh, you mean alternate yes. parking? Uh, sometimes it has well, to be. Well, I never can find a place to park except those garages where you can never get it out again. 
<laughs> so what is the successful method to find a place to park? Well, one way is to go out to uh, take uh, turns if you have a roommate, whether it's a husband or otherwise, and take turns and go out and look for a space. <laughs> well, you wouldn't keep him long. <laughs> I know a guy who found a parking space the other day, so he ran out and bought a car. Uh, number three, do you have a... Uh, do you have a chapter in your book called uh, something like How to Relax and Enjoy Being Mugged in the Park? Or do you deal with that at all? No. Chapter like that. Number two, do you deal with anything like about getting mugged or having your valuables? Never <laughs> happens in New York. Oh, it never happens. All right. Number one, do you do you have anything about uh, how to pretend you're a diplomat and uh, get, steal license plates from the UN or anything? And... Well, it isn't really meant to be a serious book. Oh. Number two, uh, that wasn't meant to be a serious question. And I wonder if we want you in our city now, Kitty Carlisle. Number two, are you a New Yorker? Yes, I am. Number three, are you a New Yorker? Yes, I am. Do you have a chapter on jaywalking, number one? No. Do you have, uh, how do you give a successful cocktail party in New York, number two? Well, uh, you have lots of people, um, crowd them in and stir. <laughs> Number one, how do you get a, re a reservation in a restaurant when there is none? Well, do you money. Use a fake name? Uh, usually money talk. Oh, you think they had waited? Well, thank you, Kitty. Tom posted that. Yeah, uh, thank you. Number one, are you from New York? No. Uh, number two was, uh, did you write this alone? No, I wrote it with my husband. That's right, because I read it. And uh, I, I appeared on a show uh, with him. Do you remember what the name of that show was? The Les Crane Show. Thank you. Number three, who else was on that uh, night with us when we were talking about the book? Hermione Gingold. Okay. It's time now to vote, if you will, and mark your ballots, selecting, if you will, either number one, number two, or number three. How then have we all marked? Okay, Tom, how did you vote? I voted for number one, unless it was... Uh, a uh, mistake on my part, I think I remember, because I read this very enjoyable book, that they came from out of town, Texas, maybe. So I voted for number one. All right, Peg. Well, I voted for number one, because the other two come from New York, and she says this is how to act like a native. But if you are a native, you don't have to act like a native, and she's not a native. See? No, but that's all. Well, <laughs> that's a ridiculous reason nobody in New York comes from New York. I voted for number two. All right. Kitty. I voted for number one. She seemed to have the authority to go with someone who wrote this book, and I believe that coming from out of town would help to write a book like that. Well, all right. There are the votes. They have made up their minds. Uh, majority looks like for number one. Maybe you agree or maybe you don't. Well, let's find out now which of these ladies is the real co-author of How to Be a New Yorker. Will the real Joan Rich please stand up? Congratulations to you and your husband on Thank what I assume Tom said must be quite a good book, eh? A lot of fun. I read the whole thing. It's great. Good. I, you know what I was just thinking? I was thinking, why, why doesn't somebody write a book for native New Yorkers on how to act so they won't look and sound like one? <laughs> we cover that, too. Do you cover that? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. That was fascinating. I must get a copy of that. Number one, let's find out about you. You've got three votes. You're an excellent fibber. Let's find out who you really are. My name is Madame Bilan, and I own a facial salon for men and women. I'm curious, number one, where, where is your home? Where are you from originally? Well, I'm really a gypsy, but I'm from Palm Beach, uh, originally. <laughs> All right. And uh, number three, let's find out about you. What is your name? My name is Barbara Bergstrom, and I'm secretary to newspaper columnist Earl Wilson. Again, Barbara, I, I, I ask you the same question. Where, where is your hometown? New Jersey. You were fibbing then, kind yes. of. All right. Oh, and let's go back. Let's go back to our real lady, Joan Rich. Joan, are you from New York? Brooklyn. You are. Good mm -hmm. for you. All right. There you go. Well, ladies, you've done very, very well. There have been three incorrect votes, which means a total of $750 for you to share. Thank you very much. And on the way out, you'll find a gift box of fine products of Direxin for each of you. Thank you. Good night.
tonight. Panel, you were brilliant, as usual. Yes, well, we always try our best, you know. And our best to you from Elmo Farnsworth. Oh, thank you. Not at all. Now then, panel, uh, join us again next week. Panel, you join us. Never mind that. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on our daytime show. Until then, this is Robert Q. 